Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? And, uh, well, happy Thanksgiving, yeah, every, yeah. every American. Yeah. Bright, <laughs> I we're, guess. we're here with you bright and early today. This is normally an evening deal. Yeah. Um, and I offered, uh, I offered Liberty Larry a drink. I said, hey, it's nine <laughs> o'clock in the morning, and you got five hours till you got to be at work. Yeah. Now seems like a good time for whiskey, doesn't it? <laughs> While it but does, he, I'm just I don't have it in the morning like that. Yeah. Just just can't do it. And I've been up most of the night smoking a bacon wrapped turkey. That sounds so terrible. It sounds amazing, and yeah. it's gonna be amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. <laughs> we did two. We do. We usually do one in the oven, and then we do one on the smoker. And this year we wrapped the smoker one in bacon. So I've done it before. It came out really good. So we're, we're I'm excited to see how this one came out. Well, I hope you enjoy it. I I intend to. <laughs> and um, you know, as long as it's Thanksgiving, I'd say I uh, you know I'm thankful that we still live in a country, at least so far, where we can put our complaints about our government out on the airwaves. Yeah. yeah um. Yeah. So far, <laughs> yeah. it might just be that we don't have a, enough listeners yet for them to care. <laughs> Hard to say. Yeah, it's, well, I don't know. I mean, there's still some other people out there singing the same song we are. Yeah. But they're getting shut down one by one, though, so. <laughs> well, and I, I'm uh, I'm thankful that we get to do this anyway, because I do really enjoy doing this podcast. Oh, absolutely. Um, I didn't get any feedback on the last episode, like, none at all. It's yeah. weird, because... We started this in like February, yeah. right? Somewhere in there Something was like our, our first episode that we put out. And uh, somehow, I got more feedback when we had like 12 listeners <laughs> yeah. than I do now. I, I mean, we have many more than 12 listeners yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and yet somehow, uh, I got lots of feedback then and I get like no feedback now. <laughs> Maybe it's all going to your email. Oh, well, but I announced very clearly <laughs> yes. that I do not have access to the Liberty Mike email right now, um, and I still haven't fixed that, but no. I'm working on it. If anybody has uh, hosting suggestions that provide free email addresses, um, let me know, <laughs> because we're, you know, I've got until, I got a couple of weeks yeah. uh, before um, my current hosting subscription ends, so um, I'm trying to find the right fit. Yeah. And we'll we'll see. But uh email is definitely a requirement. Yeah. Got to have the email. Yeah. Um and I could give out I, you know, it's still a lot of the people that listen to this podcast know how to get in touch with me without email. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Um all right. Well, uh I guess uh, enough of the of the Thanksgiving. Yeah. And we can go ahead and and jump right into it. And it's funny that we were, we were kind of planning on talking about this anyway. Um, cause I, uh, had not a conversation with a guy last week, um, who, uh, I was telling him about the podcast, like, uh, well, I was talking to somebody else about the podcast and, um, he said, Oh, you do a podcast. What's it about? And so, you know, I, I gave him the, the quick background and, um, and, you know, those politics stuff. And he was like, Oh yeah, well, I'm always trying to find something new to listen to. And, and I was like, well, you know, of course I promoted oh, uh, our, our podcast, of course. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> then a, a, a little bit later he was like, so where do you fall on the spectrum? Yeah. And I, I looked at him confusedly for a moment and I said, what spectrum <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> are you talking about? And the way he presented it to me was really like, really caught me off guard. He said, well, like, do you support Trump or are you against him? Like that's the new political spectrum. Yeah, um, it's, and it's an interesting question. Yeah, uh, and I, so I said, he said, "Do you support Trump or are you against him?" And I said, "No." <laughs> right. Because that's yeah. not what it's about at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, the lines are so blurred. Like it's not. It's yeah. It's just it's weird. Yeah, it's about the policy, not the person. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and so there are some things that Trump has done that I support, and uh, many things that he's done that I don't. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and it's not really about him. Like we don't yeah. spend a lot of time on this podcast talking about the people because I, yeah. I think the people are kind of irrelevant. They are in, um, in many ways. And then I, you know, and even in my answer to him, I, I was like, I don't think that the like, all right, well, the Trump or not thing is really off base. I think, like, I don't yeah. think about it that way at all. But even if you go into the traditional look at uh, left, right, conservative, liberal, Republican, Democrat, you know, however you want to define that spectrum, yeah, I was like, we're a libertarian podcast, yeah. and. It's it's not on that spectrum. Like, <laughs> it's, yeah. If you have your, if you have your point here for the right, nobody can see what I'm doing. So, right. um, you know, All right, so I'll try and describe. Like, if you have a line between far right and far left, however you define those things, then libertarianism isn't anywhere on that line. You have to make a triangle to put libertarianism. <laughs> we're like we're off somewhere else. It's a yeah. completely different way of looking at politics, I think, yeah. than either of those. Well, and there's actually a philosophy <clears throat> behind it. And and most libertarians, I say most, pretty well all libertarians try to stay consistent with that philosophy. Mm -hmm. However they interpret it. Now they all kind of interpret it a little differently, but but there is there's something grounded to it. Like there's there's a base for libertarianism. Yeah. It just doesn't exist with the other two parties. Well, not anymore. I mean, there was a base for them too. Uh, yeah. Particularly conservatism had, had yeah. I think, a strong philosophical base at, at some point. Um, and liberalism did too, but the, the problem is that the left-right divide or the Democrat-Republican divide doesn't hold to that at all. No. I don't think that... I don't think that any of those divisions are a useful heuristic anymore. And it... Like I said, it was, it was interesting that we were planning to talk about this anyway because I got a call yesterday and I actually I feel a little bad about it. So yeah. because uh, I have been getting a lot of like junk phone calls, you know, telling me about um, new health plan that I can get on or your car uh, insurance warranty. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and all that stuff. And uh, I'd gotten like four or five of them already early in the morning, and I got this phone call at like 10 a.m. But remember, I. I um, I had to get a new phone because my phone died and I'd never backed yeah, up my contacts. you don't have all your contacts. So yeah. I, it could be somebody that I actually want to talk to. So I'm having to answer every call whether I recognize the number or not. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I got this call in. It was a number that I didn't recognize. and But I was irritated at this point. <laughs> and so I answered with, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> and instead of a computer voice, some guy was like, uh... <laughs> And I was like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what, what, do you, were, what do you want? <laughs> thought you were automated. <laughs> uh, and it was a guy calling from the Libertarian Party oh. uh, to do a survey. And I probably would have done the survey anyway, but after answering like that, I definitely <laughs> You were obligated now, yeah. Um, and so, I, you know, I apologize. Uh, and I explained. And he was like, well, you, you may not be surprised that you're not the first to answer that way. <laughs> um, so, but we went through the questions. And, uh, and some of the questions were like where the Libertarian Party falls. And so he actually asked this question. Um, do you consider libertarianism um, a, a more right-wing, left-wing, centrist, or off-the-spectrum philosophy? And yeah. that was actually the question. Oh, and I was wow. like, oh, well, uh, off That's the spectrum. That's easy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he asked me if I thought the Libertarian Party was yeah. more right-leaning, left-leaning, centrist, or off-the-spectrum. And I said, well, that's kind of a complicated answer. Yeah. <laughs> um I said, I think that there's a difference in how the Libertarian Party tries to present itself to the public and where the leadership is in yeah. the Libertarian Party right now. And that's true. Um, and I said, so I don't know how you're gonna, what you're going to put here, but uh, I would say that the Libertarian Party tries to present itself as a centrist party. Yeah. Um, and that I think that the Libertarian leadership currently is left-leaning. Yeah. Oh, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, like back to the original point, it was just interesting that that I got that, that call. That you got that call at this yesterday. time, yeah. Yeah, um, when I've been thinking about this a lot anyway. Yeah. And um, so I was thinking, like, how do we redefine it? And, and I've been trying to redefine it since the last campaign, since 2016 yeah. campaign. Um, because I think that there was a lot of evidence that the, the traditional left-right divide was no longer a useful heuristic to try and divide up the... The, the interests, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Good thing I got that water bottle. <laughs> um, and while I like uh, Dave Smith's, um, 
you know, uh, liberty versus authoritarianism, or like if you extend it farther, um, anarchy versus, uh, uh, you know, um, totalitarianism. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I like that divide. I think that that's an important spectrum for me when yeah. I'm looking at governments, but I don't think that that's really useful again to divide up the electorate. Yeah. Um, I, I think the new divide really is, do you believe in self-government or world government? Yeah, I, I think it's the more locally focused or world globalism. Globalism, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and I think that that's the reason why a lot of the people, after uh, Bernie's campaign fizzled, um, went to Donald Trump, not to Hillary Clinton. Yep. Um, because yeah, say what you want about him, but he's he's not a globalist. No, nah. he's absolutely. I mean, he's a nationalist, <laughs> which is is not. Exactly what I would call preferable either, but I mean he's he's definitely not a globalist. Well, part of it is the recognition of, of what socialism really means. Yeah, um, that you can't like, you can't bring in everybody. Yeah. Uh, there's a reason that there's walls around socialist countries. Yeah, well, and it's the same thing with Bernie Sanders. I mean, even the Bernie Sanders recognize that that you can't have you can't have <laughs> like you can't have socialism and open borders. Like, yeah. I mean that it, it doesn't work. Like it, it will mm-hmm. that is doomed to fail. Yeah. Quicker than it will already. <laughs> and, and you know, as more as more evidence and this gives us an opportunity to call back to some previous episodes. So we were talking some about um uh about the results of the Patriot Act in the last episode with the surveillance state and, and so forth. Yeah. Um now Quietly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ever so quietly. <laughs> quietly. Uh, there were a bunch of Patriot Act um, provisions that were due to sunset at the end of the year. Yep. And uh, they have been extended to March um, of 2020, which isn't a long extension, but it is an extension. Yeah. On the back of this continuing resolution bill to keep the government from shutting down. Yeah. Has nothing to do with the government shutting down, of course. Yeah. But um, on the back of this must-pass spending bill, uh, they threw in an extension of all these provisions of the Patriot Act for another three months. Yeah. Um, now, bear in mind, again, that like if you're talking about like traditional Democrat, you're looking at the liberal civil rights, um, individual freedom kind of base. I mean, that's not – and, and yeah. the point here is that's not what the Democrat Party is anymore no, because the Democrat-controlled not. House – just pass this bill, ignoring your Fourth Amendment rights. Yeah, and and coming up when we learned in school, I mean that was when when we were learning about the different parties. I mean that was one of their big planks was was mm-hmm. that type of thing. Yeah. And and it's just I mean, but it just goes to show neither party really represents what they're trying to represent anyway. Yeah, um, and then of course it was signed by the president. Yeah. Uh, the Republican president who just signed in a spending bill that increases spending by three hundred billion yeah. uh, dollars a year, um, Which, and of course makes it the biggest spending bill in the history of governments everywhere. <laughs> uh, signed are, by a Republican yes, president. Yes, yeah. the small government Republicans. Exactly. Sure. So, All right. so I mean, I, I don't. You know, mo- I think most of our crowd is kind of a younger crowd, but um, for those of you that aren't part of the younger crowd. It might be time to re-examine these parties and see if the party that you joined back in the you know in the eighties or whatever, or the, even the nineties, yeah, is the are the Reagan Republicans still represented in the Republican Party? Yeah. Are the Clinton Democrats still represented in the Democrat Party? Yeah. I mean, or the Kennedy Democrat? Like, however yeah, you want to look however, at it, yeah. Um, it may not be the party that that you joined. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree with that. Or that you aligned yourself with it. I, you don't yeah. have to have joined the party, obviously. But <laughs> um, so, I, in anyway, I, I think that the real question now is whether it is a government that supports local control or wants to pass authority up. Yeah. Um, well, and a lot of that goes <laughs> candidate by candidate. So, like Hillary yeah. Clinton is absolutely a globalist. Like, yeah. there's no question about it. Um, and you know, I mean, in some of these elections, you end up with situations where you have two globalists basically running against each other. I mean, you could potentially, you know. Yeah. Um. So I mean, it's it, but it's because that's not while that's 
while that's the spectrum that the electric is the electorate is looking at, it's not really the one they're looking at. It's mm. it's different. Yeah, um, and I, I I don't know that the electorate as a whole is is looking at that either. But well, they're I think not, it's they're a not more necessarily important. looking at it that way. But yeah. they're voting based off of it that way. I would argue. Yeah. Well, there's there's um, nationalists and globalists in each party. Yeah. Uh, and and exactly. that's kind of the yeah that's kind of the point right there is that I think this is the new divide in American politics, um, yeah. and it hasn't structurally changed. Um, the parties yeah. but I think that that's where things are moving yeah. and it may cause a split in the parties and there's certainly yeah. been a lot of trouble within the parties because of this kind of divide oh, I think absolutely um, the the Sanders Clinton divide was was yeah. really important oh yeah and you know the Trump Bush divide uh, in the Republican Party was also very important yeah um and as a result of all that, it might give the libertarians a chance to step in there and say, "Hey, yeah, we've always thought that you should." Yeah, we're consi- <laughs> we're consistent on this. Yeah, you know. Yeah, we we want local control. Yeah. Um, people, you know, we of course we divide down to the individual. Yeah. Like it's your yeah. house. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and this isn't the order that I was planning on going into this, but it seems like a good time to to transition to the this big story, which I think is an important one, um, out of Utah. Uh, there's, um, a lady, uh, her name is, uh, Tilly, Tilly Buchanan. Um, she's being charged as a sex offender, uh, in Utah, uh, because her stepsons walked in on her topless. Okay. Hmm. So like the fuller story, um, is that she and her husband were hanging drywall in their garage um, they removed their tops because all this gypsum, gypsum dust in the air. They were trying to avoid getting all this dust in their in their clothing. Yeah. Um, and uh, the these kids walked into the garage while they were in there working. Yeah. Um, and so the I guess what's kind of the important part here, like what may have made it into a bigger issue, um, is that when they walked in on her, um, you know, she's like sat them down and spoke with them about gender equality and um, how, the, you know, this shouldn't be a shameful thing and, and so on. Yeah. Um, now, <clears throat> the the incident was reported by the children's the, the children's actual mother. OK. Um, I'm not sure how. There was like uh, some kind of unrelated investigation by social services in Utah, yeah. and it gave her the opportunity to bring it up. I'm hmm. thinking it's probably some kind of custody question I or something. I was going to say, yeah, something, some kind of fight between the two parents. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. It's just a guess. Uh, and it turns out you're right, because when we were talking about this the other night, I, yep. I said I, I just thought like maybe one of the kids mentioned it to a friend or something like that. Yeah. Um, the kids are like 9, 10, and 13. Okay. Um and that, you know, maybe one of the kids mentioned it to a friend and some mother or some teacher got, you know. Got um, wind of it, yeah. yeah. Uh, started clutching pearls and, like, had to report it. Yeah. Um, and you said, and your first thought was that, well, it was probably their mother. Yeah, exactly. Uh, as soon know. as you said step parents were involved, I mean, that's yeah. just immediately where you go. Yeah. So. Um, so, as a result of this, she was charged with three counts of lewdness involving a child in Utah, which is a misdemeanor, yeah. um, but it could also force her to register as a, as a sex offender for the next 10 years. That's insane. Um, and uh, just because I thought that this was such a, a good way of talking about it, um, I did uh, write down the stuff that... So the the prosecutor... All right, so her defense attorneys... Yeah. Um, are related to the Free the Nipple campaign, okay. which I was not familiar with before this. Um, yeah. and I'm only vaguely familiar with it. I yeah. have seen this campaign floating around, though. Yeah, this is apparently like a, a reasonably sized movement um, from women uh, that are push. Well, not just women, but um, that are pushing to have laws apply equally. Yeah. So if men can take their shirts off, women can take their shirts off. Essentially, yeah. Um, uh, from I, I watched a a, a documentary. On it, so that I could figure out something. <laughs> so, so you could understand it better. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, it, like most of, the, there were two big topics. Yeah. Like uh, one of them was um, public breastfeeding. Yeah. Uh, which is has been which an is, issue for a long time. Which is the one that I'm most familiar with because usually when I've seen it brought up, that's the frame it's usually brought up in. 
Yeah, I mean, I got the pre- impression that most of it was just about gender equality. Yeah. Uh, that um, that both genders should have the, the same rights and privileges, uh, or restrictions for that matter. So yeah. um, if men can take their shirts off, women can take their shirts off. They're, the only yeah. difference is gender, and so therefore there shouldn't be a divide. Yeah. Um, and they kept calling back to how there used to be laws preventing men from taking their shirts off in public too. Yeah. Um, but they changed the law so that men can, but women still couldn't. Yeah. And that's unfair. Well. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Um, but anyway. We uh, are different. <laughs> yeah, so her... Her defense attorney sent a letter to the prosecutors in this case yeah. uh, demanding that they drop the charges and seal her record. And I, so I, I pulled this paragraph from that letter because I thought it was a, a really good approach. Okay. Um, it says, Because Tilly Buchanan is a woman, says the state of Utah, she is not allowed to strut shirtless through her own home. Because Tilly Buchanan is a woman, she is not free to display her body with pride, but must instead conceal it in shame, even in the privacy of her own home. Because Tilly Buchanan is a woman, her bare chest is censured as being inherently pornographic and perverse, while her husband's bare chest is celebrated as an emblem of strength and pride. Because Tilly Buchanan is a woman, and only because she is a woman, the state now seeks to condemn her as a child sex offender for engaging in the exact same non-sexual conduct as her lawfully faultless husband. Tilly Buchanan is being singled out for prosecution solely on the basis of sex. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, that, I don't disagree with any of that. I mm. think that's actually a really smart way to attack it. I agree, yeah. uh, which is why I wrote it down. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> um, and so and this is like the worst level of the government inserting itself into your own home. Exactly. Now, and think of the implications of this, Yeah. right? Like if any kid walks in on a parent naked, yeah. Is that parent like liable for prosecution as a sex offender? I, I mean, mean, that's it, that's insanity. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's my house. Like <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Can't I decide what I'm going to wear in my own, own home? house? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, unreal. Uh, and so yeah. And then I, you know, I came across the um, the free the nipple campaign, and I was like, okay, well, you know, I can get on board with this. I like I understand what you, what you're promoting. Yeah. Except I will say there was this one girl in one of the, in um, the video who she only got to talk for a few seconds as she was passing the the documentary camera. Kind of man camera. on the street. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, and she's topless. It's a young girl. She's like probably in her early twenties. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Give or take. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And she's got written all over her body, still not asking for it. (laughs) And she makes some comments about rape culture and so on. And I was like, okay, well, if this is something because you're you're saying, well, you know, I should be able to, you know, be free to display my body in public if I want to. You know, okay, absolutely. I agree. If it's going to be, I should be able to be free to display my body in public uh, too. And I'm going to shame you if you look at me. Now then, we have a problem. <laughs> then I have a bit of a problem. Yeah. Now, and I, you know, it was just this one thing, but she, that's like yeah. that's the approach that this girl was taking with it. You know, still not asking for it, not asking to be raped just because I'm showing my boobs in public. Yeah. Um, and I agree. Yeah. Uh, but like, if you if it's going to be a thing, I don't know. She just the, the it was attitude. abrasive. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, like I said, I, I'm I might be um, could be turned off. Well, I might be putting more on on. Yeah. Putting more on what she means by all that than what well, she actually and means. Any, but anytime you have a movement, <clears throat> something like that, you're going to have people in that movement that aren't that are alongside what you're trying to do. Yeah, you know. Well, and I, I agree. Like, if she wants to display her her body in public, that if somebody grabs her, oh, like yeah. that's a problem. Well, yeah, absolutely. Right? Like, I agree with her there. But if it's going to be uh, like, and don't you look at me? You know, it's like the women yeah. that wear these like really low cut shirts, and they'll yeah. lean over, <laughs> and then they'll get on to you for looking at their cleavage, and you're like, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> why'd you put it out there? Yeah. Like, like, okay, public my eyes dis- only have so many places to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, public display is a public display. Exactly. Um, so. so, but then I started thinking more. I mean, I think that we can agree on. Um, morality legislation generally which is what this is oh yeah um it's this idea like like he said in the in the letter um this idea that uh a woman's breasts are inherently pornographic and perverse yeah like that's kind of absurd um 
And, uh, and I have a problem with morality legislation. I was reminded by, uh, of this quote um, by Robert Heinlein. I, I won't have it exactly right, so I'm going to say I'm paraphrasing, although I <laughs> think it's pretty close. Yeah. Um, he said, uh, It is a truism that any group, cult, or sect will legislate its beliefs into law if given the political power to do so. Um, and you know, this is one of those kinds of things. And this is Utah. This is a Mormon state, right? Like, you know, this lewdness thing anyway. Um, but I think it would apply here. I mean, there's a, you know, this is a Baptist state primarily. And there's a certainly like strong moral. Well, and, and you get into that with alcohol in the South. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the, the laws have loosened up a lot on that now, but like blue laws were a thing a decade ago yeah um and still are in a few cities <clears throat> mm-hmm. um so but it was a count when i started managing stores it was a county-wide thing like, yeah. it didn't explain, matter explain blue laws because some people might um, be unfamiliar well with um at, at least here in alabama what it, or in baldwin county what it was was you couldn't sell alcohol on sunday mm-hmm. so um and actually the way ours ran it was it was you couldn't sell alcohol all day and then they moved it to well you couldn't sell it before noon um, and then eventually they refined it down to like they gave the municipalities the yeah. authority, and most places just went with you could buy all day. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, and, I, uh, but that's that's heavily backed by your Baptist. I mean, that's yeah. a, you know. Well, what was uh, I remember vaguely um, the story? I, I grew up in the Episcopalian Church, okay, and um, we take wine with communion. Yeah, and uh, I remember the story vaguely um, about the. Uh, our priest on Sunday realizing that there was not enough wine yeah. uh, for the communion services yeah. and um, going to the store to buy wine and being refused. <laughs> and couldn't buy wine for his <laughs> service. Yeah. Um, which, oh. yeah. Oh, well. That's, well, you see, and I was raised Baptist, so we always <clears throat> took like grape juice or something. Yeah. Or yeah, apple I, juice or something like a, that. I went to a Baptist school um, yeah. for through fifth grade. Yeah. Um, and I remember, like, I asked that question because I was raised in the Episcopal Church, and I was like, "Well, why do you? Why don't you drink wine? Why is it this grape juice stuff?" Yeah. And uh, they told me that, uh, you know, back uh, in the, you know, in the early Christian days, um, that they didn't, they hadn't refined the fermentation process, and so uh, the wine then was really more like grape juice. Oh well, wow! I learned later that the Romans. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty there, sure we figured this Christian out pretty time, early on. Right? Were quite good at the fermentation process yes. and actually had to water down their wine because it was so strong. <laughs> strong, yeah. yeah. Anyway. So, that's um, funny. Well, but it so there's some extensions to this that you then have to start ask que- asking questions about. Yeah. Um, like if they overturn these laws uh, about. Um, you know, about public nudity generally. Yeah. Uh, what about children? Um, yeah. What about children in public? Um, actually, that's more or less allowed here anyway. Like, you go to yeah. a pool, you'll see, like, really young girls. Oh, yeah. Um, oftentimes with no tops on. Like, I, yeah. and when I'm say really young, I'm like four to six, yeah. you know. Like, like toddlers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, okay, how about teens? Yeah. Wow. Like if there's a, and there's a real concern about pedophilia and so forth. Like yeah. if you have like teenage girls out in public or guys, I guess. But yeah. um, and, and my response to to that, at least offhand, would be like I wouldn't let my kids run around like that. Yeah. <laughs> but the question is, does the government have a responsibility to preemptively protect yeah. them by saying and, that and they can't is, do this? It is a tough question because because a part of me would say no, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I have a teenage daughter and I know how they can be. So just because when I say they can't run around topless and the, nobody else is going to stop them, I'm not there 100% of the time. Yeah. So Well, but you're not there 100% of the time. Neither is the law. Well, I guess yeah. Is what, well, and that's, <laughs> and that's true. Say. So, I mean, that's where it comes down to raising your kids right. I yeah. mean, so, but it is it's a tough question well so there's there's a flip side to this too um in my house growing up we didn't have a taboo on nudity yeah uh and so and i think that you know of course when you get to uh be a teenager when you hit puberty like there's some weird body issues anyway just because things are are changing are you don't quite yeah. understand yeah um but i think that i think that my brother and i had fewer body issues because we weren't taught to be ashamed about our bodies to begin with. Yeah. Um, 
And so there's some of that here too. Does the like does it make things better for them mentally later if they're not taught to be ashamed about it to begin with? Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know I what think... things were like in your house. Like my house was yeah. three guys and a and a girl growing up, and so was yours. Yeah. Um, but yeah. now you live in a house with three girls and a guy, yeah. and a... it's nothing but women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's... And I don't know if that changes sure. that. Like, does that? I mean, a, a little bit, but not not as much as you would think. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh. Um. So. um so, uh, you know, so this is what I, I came down with on this. Like, if you're going to... All right. Moral legislation is an issue to begin with. And, and like so many things that we've talked about on this podcast, um, like demanding tolerance for something like, that I disagree with, yeah. I think is fair. Yeah. Like, I disagree with it as long as you're not hurting anybody. That I, I have no right to tell you that you can't do it. Absolutely. Um, but you reach a point also in some of this legislation where not only am I told that I have to tolerate it, yeah. I'm told that I have to approve of it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a difference there. <laughs> Which is something else entirely. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I don't agree with that either. And, but so what you're saying when you say, well, there shouldn't be any laws that uh, enforce this just because I disapprove doesn't mean that the state has the right to tell me that – um, somebody can't do that or yeah. that, you know, to tell somebody else that they can't do this as long as they're not hurting anybody. Yeah. Um, and of course that goes, but that also, you know, all right, let me try and square <laughs> this. Um, they also can't say that you have to put up with it either. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, you, or that you have to agree with it. Yeah. Right. Nudity in public becomes a kind of a weird issue in that regard. Right. Yeah. Because, um, just because somebody doesn't approve of nudity doesn't give them the right to tell somebody else that they can't be nude. Yeah. But then that nude person is kind of forcing them <laughs> to accept it in public. Yeah. Right. So it it kind of goes both ways. And so how do you how do you resolve this? Yeah. And I heard somebody say that the um, to resolve mutually exclusive goals is the purpose of government. Now I disagree with that, but, yeah. um, and I suppose that's why I, I settled on the answer that I did, because I think that the purpose of government is to protect people's, people's individual rights. Yeah. Um, and so my position on this is that whenever there's a question on this, yeah. you settle on the side of least restrictions. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, in which case I would say that public nudity is okay, but then, yeah, where, where does that lead? What about like, you know, is homeless sex okay? Is there is there a limitation then? Do you, yeah. can you have sex in public then? Yeah. If uh, if you can be nude in public and you're not well, restricting I mean, these I th things, I think oh. there is a, a pretty sharp line though between between being vulgar and being nude because yeah. I don't think those are the same to me at least. Those aren't the same thing. No, they're not so, the same thing to me. I either. mean, if a woman wants to walk around topless, that's one thing. It's mm -hmm. a totally different when you're committing sex acts. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, and that's to me, that's kind of where the line is. But mm -hmm. everybody kind of defines these lines differently, so it's it's hard to say. Yeah. Well, and I think that what you end up with is you you just end up with like a general cultural feel about it, yeah. and it'll vary from place to place, yeah. which is back to that self government. Which is why thing. we promote self government, yeah. absolutely. And and I think that's the right way to handle it. I mean, there there are areas where you know one thing's okay, and that's and you kind of have to know where you're at, you know. And we're here in the South. You yeah. Know. And, uh, you know, and the reason that the self-government is so valuable in this case is that, like, you can go wherever it is that that the government of that area agrees with you generally. Yeah. Well, um, and that's, that's kind of... And if those areas where government has control are smaller, it's easier to move from place to place. Exactly. If you put everything up to the federal or even the world level, yeah. um, then there's nowhere I can go. Well, and you just kind of you have to think of these laws from like a national perspective. So, like if mm -hmm. the if the federal government was going to enforce nudity laws, mm -hmm. there's really no way for to to come up with a reasonable answer yeah. because there's you know the, every area is just so different. Mm -hmm. But in a situation like this, like as long as your local municipalities are kind of figuring that out. You yeah, know, you can come up with some reasonable answer, answers for the areas you live in. Yeah, I mean, uh, more conservative Daphne can have strict nudity laws, while next door, yeah. uh, more hippie Fair Fairhope can have yeah. less restrictive laws. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 
And then right. if you don't like it here, you can just go to Fairhope. It's if you want to, if you if you don't like it, you can go to the beach in Daphne. Yeah. If you are okay with it, you can go to the beach in Fairhope. Yeah, yeah. It's, go to the nude beaches in Fairhope, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> or topless, oh, at the well. very least. Maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's exactly the yeah. the, the point. Exactly. Um, well, shifting gears a little. Uh, <laughs> this is this may be a bigger discussion. I, I turned away from the microphone again. This, yeah. um, this may be a bigger discussion than we want to handle here. Um, I don't know what our... We'll, we'll see what we can do. With see it. where we end up. Yeah. Um, so I saw this uh, little bit where um, one of China's senior diplomats uh, said that the U.S. is the greatest source of instability in the world. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I kind of agree with him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I, I just wanted to talk about this in kind of a historical context, but we'll start with the current. Um, so I think that we made a reason. All right. There's protests all over the place right now. Absolutely. Protests in Hong Kong. There's protests in Lebanon. There's protests in Iraq. There's protests in Iran. There's protests in Colombia. There's protests in Venezuela. There's, I mean, there's protests Everywhere. all over the place. Right yeah. Now. People are in the streets. And, uh, so we, we've talked about Bolivia a little bit, and I think we made a fair case that the U.S. government was kind of involved. Yeah. Um, and I don't know that I made the point at the time. Uh, I hope I did, <laughs> um, because then it makes me a prophet. Uh, <laughs> and if I didn't, then I really regret not saying it at the time, because um, how smart I would look now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think that the the a big part of the reason that the... Um, U.S. would have attempted a regime change in Bolivia, besides the fact that they that we've our government has never liked Evo Morales, yeah, um, because he nationalized some industries and so on, preventing uh, U.S. Uh, business takeovers in Bolivia and so forth. Same old communist yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, but the, I think that a big part of it was. They were unable to get the regime change they wanted in Venezuela, and Bolivia is one of the few South American countries that was still supporting uh, Maduro. Yeah. Um, no, we absolutely talked about this at the time. Okay, good. We did. Uh, no. Because like, almost immediately after um, the self-proclaimed new president of Bolivia, uh, Añez, who declared herself president after meeting with the military, not with the legislature. Yeah. But it's not a coup. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, one of the first uh, acts that she did as president was to recognize Juan Guaido as the legitimate president of Venezuela. Of course. Which I think is really funny because you have like one illegitimate president recognizing the legitimacy of another illegitimate president. And I, I thought about um, the things that the uh, intelligence services do here in the U.S. all the time um, when they want to get a story out. Yeah. When they they leak some information to like the Washington Post or the New York Times, and then some administrator goes out and talks in public about it uh, yeah. after the article on the leak comes out, and they use that article as evidence of what they're talking. <laughs> of what about. they're talking. Yeah. Right. Insane. It's this weird circular this, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Just and, <laughs> making it up as you go. So that was like the first thing that I, I, I thought about. Yeah. And, um, you know, we the U.S. has almost certainly been the cause of a lot of this unrest in South America. Yeah. Right. Um, and then uh, we have Iraq. Yeah. Um, and there's and I think we made a fair case then, too, that the U.S. might be involved in overthrowing um, Mahdi. Yeah, uh, because he is playing too neutral about Iran, and we don't like yeah. Iran. Yeah, right. His own neighbor, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so last week, uh, Mike Pence made a trip to Iraq. Yeah, and he met with the uh, quote unquote um, president of Iraqi Kurdistan, uh, President Barzani. Okay. Um, of Iraqi Kurdistan, and we know Iraqi Kurdistan is not a country. Yeah, it's just like a. I'm not saying that they shouldn't area. be. I believe in self government, but yeah. but um, they're not. Yeah, but they're not a country. So he goes yeah. and he meets with the uh, President Barzani of Iraqi Kurdistan, and this is probably a show that like we're still on board with the Kurds, even though you know yeah. we just left them, which I'm okay with, by the way. Yeah. Um. And uh, but he did not meet with the actual Iraqi president <laughs> Mahdi. 
That's interesting. And I thought, well, this is a this is definitely um, a display. Yeah, right? like, this is a snub. <laughs> yeah, this is a, this is a sign that's being given here. Yep. Um, and uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I just I was kind of blown away by it, and it just to me it, it's more evidence that that we have something to do with this. Yeah. And um, so I, I was thinking, like, all right, so the U.S. I think undoubtedly has had a positive effect, like more more good than bad on the world as a whole in our history. Okay. Um, since the formation of the country. Yeah. And just like the actual formation of the country and our constitution and the Declaration of Independence. The like example things, we set. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the old idea of the, the yeah. great beacon of liberty on the hill. Yeah. I, I think that that has had a tremendous ripple effect across the world and has improved a lot, a lot of people's lives. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so on the whole, I think that the United States has has had a very positive impact on the world. Now, as we've moved forward in history, if we start kind of, if we say look at the last 50 years, I'm starting to have some questions. Like that takes yeah. us back to kind of the middle of the Vietnam War, yeah. um, the middle of the Cold War. Yeah. Uh, and I think that, you know, like... Have we still had more positive impact than negative impact? I mean, a lot of people died. Was it really necessary to contain communism? It's self-defeating, yeah. um, as was evidenced in the end by the, the fall of the Soviet Union. Yeah. Um, and uh, while China has still maintained something of a communist government, they have liberalized their economy tremendously. Which is the reason it's growing and doing the things it's doing is because they're because they're opening up these markets and doing these things. Yeah, and I think it's the reason that they haven't had a, a real collapse in China anyway. Yeah. And the funny part, or the ironic part, um, is that I think that it's also leading to a different kind of revolution in the future. Yeah, but. We'll we'll see how that goes, and we may talk about that at length some that'd, other time. That'd be a good a, episode, I think. We we need to put that one in our pocket. Okay, uh, make a note. Yep. Um, <laughs> Done. <laughs> uh, and so I, you know, as you get into the last fifty years, I start to wonder. Like we have, we've overthrown a bunch of governments. Um, we've decided since the end of World War II that we are the real power, and yep. the and then since the fall of the Soviet Union, we are the only power. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. And. and it it goes to back to the bigger question of of you know have we have we had a positive impact it it goes back to the whole self government thing because here we are a foreign power mm-hmm. coming into these places and trying to control them yeah and it it just it doesn't it doesn't work and it's not because a lot of people would argue that well the world would be chaos if the u.s wasn't involved in all of these things Mm -hmm. what the factor you don't consider because a lot of people that's how they look at it they they don't they don't have a deep knowledge of what's going on in these places Mm -hmm. and they think well it'd just be chaos if we weren't there yeah um and i used to be one of those people by the way my little brother reminds me all the time that I've I have switched sides here. I yeah. have I have I've the more I've learned, the more I've came to this conclusion. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just have to you have to look at it through the eyes of that we're the foreign power interfering in these people's homeland. Mm-hmm. And when you when you look at it through those eyes, and especially the amounts, like I know where you're going as, as we refine it down. Mm-hmm. When you get down to the last twenty years, yeah, not much of a question. That we've had more of a negative impact. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you really, you can't, I don't see how you make an argument that we have it. Well, um, you know, just as some examples, uh, there's been a few governments yeah. in the world that have been installed by the United States. Yeah. Iraq yeah. is one of them. Yeah. Um, Afghanistan, uh, Ukraine, Egypt. Um, yeah. these, these are some of the most corrupt governments in the world. Absolutely. And I, I think the U.S. is up there in the most corrupt governments yeah. in the world, actually, too. Yeah. But I um, think most people agree with you on that one. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know that that's true, but I. I how many, how, we're how trying often to shift you, people's thinking here. How, how often doing. do you talk to people and they're like, "Man, our government really is looking out for our interests." Those politicians up there in Washington, man, they're they're looking out for the little guy. Yeah, yeah. Like you don't hear that. Like nobody says that. That's what they say about AOC. <laughs> well, well, that's what they. Here's the here's the thing about that. Though. That's what they say about their own mm-hmm. representatives. I will say for her, by the way, um, that she did not sign the uh, 
Patriot Act extension. Really? Yeah. Hey, well, hey, credit where credit's due, man. Yeah, absolutely. Don't get a lot there, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, um, yeah, these are some of the most corrupt governments in the world, we're, and we're the ones that installed them. This yeah. is how, by the way, Zelensky, uh, Vladimir Zelensky in Ukraine got elected. Yeah. Um, he was on a, a TV show where he played the president, where, I, as I understand it, a big part of it was making fun of the corruption of yeah. the government. Yeah. Um, and he ran on an anti-corruption platform. Yeah, which is how everybody knew him that watched the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting plan there. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so if you get on TV, you can be elected president. Apparently, this is the this well, is what we're learning well, then, from. Well, things. I don't know, man. I mean, maybe maybe there's a plot that so Trump did here. too. Well, it, it is. <laughs> maybe we just need to have some show where there's a libertarian president. Yeah, and then that guy needs to run. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, we got Jacob Hornberger. That's pretty good. Hey, yeah, I was gonna say before this podcast is over, we need to give him a little. I'll, we may have already mentioned it, but Hornberger. Yeah, we've talked about him. We 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 all need to get behind him. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's, it's time, one of those ah, moments. So good on, really on so everything. much. I mean, yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll we're, come back we're, to it. We're, we're circling. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll come back to it. And then I was thinking, um, like historically speaking, uh, we also installed Iran's Shah. Yep. Um, we installed Saddam Hussein. Yes, we did. <laughs> and uh, and we talked about it on the last episode. Uh, we we installed uh, Ngo or however you say his name in Vietnam, yeah. and then overthrew him. Kind of the same we're doing with Mahdi. Yeah. Um, or I think we're doing with Mahdi. So, and then on top of all this, uh, Trump just signed legislation supporting the Hong Kong separatists. Okay. And I, I know they keep calling them protesters because that's how we that's how we do it. If we approve of what they're doing, they're protesters. They're protesters, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, it's the it's the Hong Kong separatists, really, this, this yeah. democracy movement to try and separate themselves, really, from the Chinese mainland, yeah. um, from the Beijing government. And while it is supposed to be t- uh, one country, two systems, one country is a part of that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And um, so what the these bills that he signed did, uh, they're sanctioning... Um, Officials that have been uh, that are implicated in human rights abuses, um, ban on crowd control munitions sales to China. I think that this is funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this this is interesting. You got my you have my attention. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, ban on crowd control munitions sales. Now, as I understand it, crowd control munitions are generally non lethal. So we're going to stop sending the Chinese government non lethal weapons to put down the protests. Interesting. The, the protests. Protests. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, what are they going to do then? Maybe we come back to that. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure the Chinese government is capable of producing their own. By the way. Oh, but yeah, of all things, yeah. yeah. I'm sure they got plenty of that stuff. Um, and then it's going to require a regular confirmation that there is enough independence in Hong Kong to maintain their special trade status with the U.S. Yeah, uh, which is is different from the Chinese mainland trans- trade status. That you know, hmm. it's it's more of a free trade agreement with yeah. uh, Hong Kong um, yeah. specifically. So. And this is another thing that's kind of funny. So if we decide that there's not enough separation, then um, we uh, put the same kind of sanctions on trade to Hong Kong that we do on the Chinese mainland, which have been increasing and increasing, increasing and increasing. increasing yeah. And is this really going to do well for the people of Hong Kong? I'll tell you what would do well for the people of Hong Kong if we started funding them with weapons. I mean, oh, we do it everywhere else, well, right? Well, I mean, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to me, that's like the next step in those planks you just laid out. Yeah, is, all right, we're going to start arming the rebels. Yeah, I, I think that you're. I think that you may be right. Yeah. Um, I mean, that this does give an opportunity uh, for the U.S. to say, "Well, all right." I, I think it leads to a couple of things. First off, um, it emboldens the already violent protesters. Oh, absolutely. I mean, these are guys that are throwing Molotov cocktails at police and so forth. They've yeah. had like. Like four incidents where live fire um, have happened yeah. has happened from the police at the protesters. These yeah. protesters that are firing, uh, throwing Molotov cocktails and all yeah. this stuff. Now, transplant that to the United States. By the way, do you think yep. that we would have had six months of protests where people were throwing Molotov cocktails at police, and police <laughs> would only have fired on protesters four yeah. times? Never gonna happen. Nope. Yeah. So they're showing incredible restraint, I yeah. would say, already. Oh, absolutely. I mean, not that the police aren't being violent, but 
Yeah. Uh, too. I mean, there people have just, been beaten. Just think and about so forth, police but, in our country. They do far worse. I promise. Uh, oh, Especially yeah. if they were black. Yeah. And so we're emboldening these already violent protesters that have been out there uh, waving American flags before now. And now yeah. they've got like approval from the American president, yeah. um, which m- means something more to them than I think it actually means. Yeah. Um, and so you embolden these already violent protests to be more violent, potentially. And I, yeah. I think it forces China's hand. Yeah. Like at some point they have to like really respond in a yeah. way that crushes this. Yeah. Um, if you... If you allow it to persist at this point. Yeah. Um, and, and especially if the U.S. is promoting it. Yep. At the, and so this brings up another question. And I, we, I, we've talked about the Uyghurs on this podcast before. I, I think yeah. only in passing. But this is the, um, the uh, Chinese uh, Muslim um, subsect, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and they're like horribly oppressed in China. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of a known, it's been an open secret. They move them to these, uh, camps where they try and re-educate them to be more Chinese and, (laughs) you know, so on. Um, but recently, like in the last week or or so, um, there was a document leaked, uh, from the Chinese government that confirms the existence of all these camps. And it's given people the opportunity to get up there and virtue signal about, you know, whatever. But... Um, both in the the unrest in Hong Kong and now that we know that there's like pretty severe human rights abuses on the Uyghurs in China, what responsibility does the U.S. have to protect the rights of people in China? Yeah. Like how far does that extend? That's that's really the question. Like yeah. I, I am absolutely on board with the U.S. and the international community putting pressure on China. Um just like public pressure yeah, on yeah, China public pressure, to yeah. change the way that they're doing things. Yeah. But if China doesn't respond, it's it's their country. It's mm-hmm. not our country. Yeah. It's 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 just not. Yeah. And, and that's kind of my my take on it as well. Mm-hmm. Is you know I mean they they each eat they have to hash it out on their own. Yeah, so. um, I agree, and I, I was it made me think. Let me try and look it up. Um, there's the. I quoted the whole thing before, but um, there's that speech from uh, John Adams or maybe Quincy Adams um, at the end of his presidency where he talks about going out and seeking monsters to destroy. Yeah. Um, And I think that that's like there's a part of that that's relevant here, um, which is uh, where he says, uh, wherever the standard of freedom and independence has been or shall be unfurled, uh, there will be her heart. Uh, It's talking about the United States uh, as a country, as a nation, I guess. Um, There will her heart, her benedictions, and her prayers be. But she goes not abroad in search of monsters to destroy. She is the well-wisher to the freedom and independence of all. She is the champion and vindicator only of her own. Absolutely. Um, But this is a... Yeah, I mean, but this is a sentiment that we have lost here in this country. Yeah. Um, That we are in support of you if you want freedom. That, you know, we will publicly... um, Proclaim we, that that's what you deserve. We will send our armies to fight for it. Yeah, but and, that's and what it's become. And it just doesn't work. And that's that's kind of the point I was making earlier. I mean, you send these armies. It's a foreign invader, and it's that's it has to come from within. Yeah, if these it's same thing in China. Like mm-hmm. China will get there if they want to, and it won't be because we went in there and helped them. Yeah. Well, in Iraq, um, the you know the big complaint from the U.S. is this huge influence of Iran in, um, in Iraq's government. And, uh, and that's what they're, they're talking about on the, um, on the media here as the reason for these protests is because they're, they're upset about Iran's involvement in their government. What they're not telling you is that they're also upset with the U S S involvement in their government. Absolutely. Even though the Iraqi government is now a Shia government that aligns itself reasonably with Iran, um, they're opposed to domination from outside, no matter who it's coming from. Exactly. Exactly. So it, it just it's it's a formula that doesn't work. And you would think after all of these years and all of this that we that we would recognize that and we don't. Yeah. Um Yeah. So. Well, um I, I mean I guess that's that's our point. Like we support personal liberty. Absolutely. We support self government. Yep. We do not support it at the point of a gun. Yep. There you go. 
wrapped up in a bow. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, like we used to kind of try and end these things in quotes. I um, And there's a good one, uh, and I think I've used it before too, but that's fine. Yeah. You, you we can be recycle. Reminded. Yeah, we've yeah. got to be reminded of these things from time to time. Um, there's an old uh, Lakota Sioux proverb um, that's something like, uh, force, no matter how concealed, begets resistance. Yeah. Nice. Um, all right. Well, uh, happy Thanksgiving again, everyone. Um, yeah. Enjoy it. Eat lots of food. Still looking for that feedback. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about the podcast to your family members. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it won't create hey. any divisiveness at the... <laughs> no, no. This is the perfect time to talk politics. <laughs> right? All your families together, you're drinking a little bit, full of food. At least nobody can get up and chase anyone. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, follow us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe on iTunes or Podbean. Um, share, like. Yeah. share personally too yeah Absolutely. i mean this is at least a good time hey if you start to get in one of these political discussions with your family members and things are going badly just say you know what like we don't need to talk about it just listen to the liberty mic yeah yeah we got the answers for you yeah <laughs> um all right well uh that was fun um and uh we'll be back in a week right like we'll, yeah I, I as of right now i see no nothing standing in the way of thursday Again. I mean, All right. I mean, we did it on Thanksgiving. I mean, what else, right? Yeah. <laughs> Remember, so. we were working on Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah. Yep. Um, so uh, we'll be back on Thursday when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Train how you fight. Ciao. Later.